Hi, welcome back to AQA Certificate Further Mathematics GCSE. Today we are on chapter 7.2, Graphs for Sine, Cosine and Tangents. Uh, this is a great A video, I hope you enjoy it, and let's start. So I think um, a lot of people will be like saying, oh, sine, cosine and tangent is just basically random things that is well, really random, and we have no idea what it is, but it actually is continuous, and it has a rhythm to it, and there are graphs that are quite beautiful, and, well, it kind of look, I'll say elegant, but people will be like, nah, it's not, but basically it's um, beautiful in the way that it works with nature and it's just well interesting so yeah you have to know those three graphs um, to help you with finding answers it can be really difficult but if you learned it then it's gonna stay in your brain forever and ever and every single mathematician but i believe um that has a degree or so will know these three graphs. So I have a classic sine graph on the screen and basically a sine graph is a wave that starts from zero, peaks at 90, drop back to zero at 180, go down to bottom at 270, then go back up 360. It repeats this uh, pattern uh, either in the positive direction which goes from 360 to um, 720 or it goes backwards um, from 0 to negative 360 and it goes repeatedly on and on and on and never stops so this is why it works for every single uh, angle one way to understand this is from a circle. If I can, f um, yeah, there we go. I've got a circle here. And why does this graph always um, repeat? Because um, this is a circle, and we know that one complete circle is 360 degree. So. After 360 degree, it goes right back to where it started. So basically, you jump from 360 back to zero, then go positive again, then jump back, then jump back, and on and on and on. It works for every single trigonometry um, graph, like even on the tangent graph which I'll talk about later, but that is basically what it looks like. So you have to remember, it peaks at 1. Anything larger than 1 is not valid, and if you try it on the calculator, it will say math error. Same applies for anything smaller than negative 1, like negative 2 or negative 100. Those won't work, because it exceeds the uh, range of this equation. So now we're, we've done um, the sine graph, let's go on to the cosine graph. So now this is a cosine graph. Basically a cosine graph is just, it, if you look at it, it's kind of similar to the sine graph if I do this. Bear with poor drawing. Um, like that. Yep, it's quite terrible really. So you can see um, from this up here to the top, go down to zero, then go back to negative one, then go back to zero. This is basically a sine graph. What is cosine graph? Is basically everything shifted left side by 90 degree. So what is used to be 180 becomes 90 now, what is used to be uh, 360 becomes 270, and what's become, um, well, what was 90 becomes 0. 
and it's basically everything shifted by 90 degree and it's a good way to remember this uh, graph is from the sine graph so sine graph or cosine graph you only need to remember one of them sine start from zero cosine start from one and that is all from um, Sine, uh, cosine graph. Let's do tangent. Okay, so this is the tangent graph, which looks a bit complicated. Like, really, it is complicated. But to be fair, it's a lot less um, random than other things. It there's got a pattern, a pretty pattern, um, kind of, and it's it can be understood as this. When you type in uh, tangents, um, I think arctangent 90, arctangent 270, uh, or arctangent negative 90 or um, 450, uh, you get an answer that is math error. The reason of that is these uh, lines go down to infinity and never reaches uh, the line x equals 90 degree. That is um, a fact. It never reaches this red line and so there aren't a failure for that. But any other lines there are. There are uh, solutions to that. So for these um, kind of thing you only need to know where it uh, starts from, which is 0 to 90, then 90 to 270, then se 270 to th um, 360. You don't need to know that, like, past 360 because, again, it repeats. And, yeah. So, um, you have to remember that 90 never reaches, 270 never reaches, and the shape is basically um, kind of an S, but not quite. So that is all from tangent graphs. So there will be um, questions where you have to answer when I think y is equal to sine x or sine x is equal to some kind of number, then you have to find in range 0 to 360 or 0 to 180 um, the value of x. And for those questions, they are most likely to be uh, ranged from two answers to, I think, four numbers. And they can be tricky. And I will admit that I did a lot of mistakes when I do those questions because it's just um, tricky at that time. But now I am going to show you a real good way of doing those questions. So let's start with an example that we all know. Uh, wait, it's special angles. Yeah, I have done special angles, and so you should know that this is a sine graph, and I want to do a sine fifty, uh, not sine fifty, arc sine fifty, which means, uh, basically, what you know from special angle is that this point going downwards is going to be thirty, because sine thirty is not point five, which is right here. But the f thing about this um, multiple answer question is it's like well where is the second answer well we know it crosses right here so there must be another answer right here but we don't know this how do we find it well what you can do is um, because you know uh, you don't know but we know uh, that 0 to 90 is equal to 90 to 180 and the shape is pretty much uh, a mirror image and it is it has an axis of reflection uh, right on this line although this is not a straight line now that is and so we have 
an axis that is reflected. So if you give it a bit of thought, we know that 0 to 30 is 30 apparently, and because it's mirrored, the unknown point 180 is also 30, because, well, they are mirrored, and so uh, we can get that the question mark is actually 150 degree, and if you want to try and use a calculator to press sine 150, you will get a half, and that is how you solve multiple answer questions of sine, cosine, and tangent graphs. All you can, uh, all you need to do is to draw a horizontal line through the point where uh, the graph meet, and so you can check how many answers are there for this particular answer. So if it is zero, then there are one, two, and three possible answers. If it is a half or anything between one and zero, or uh, negative one to zero, then it's going to be having two different answers because they have two answers apparently. And uh, if it is one or negative one, it's going to have only one answer, which is 90 or 270 because it only crosses that single point and that point is a tangent line. Well, didn't we talk about tangent? No, not that tangent, not the si uh, not the trigonometry tangent, the line tangent. Okay, so um, yeah, that is how you should solve these kind of questions, and it works for every single um, one of the sine cosine tangent graphs, and you can use that to your advantage when you want to check. Oh, did I miss out on some kind of answers? And if you did, then you can. Um, draw a line, see how many uh, answer you should have gotten, and yeah, that is how you solve these kind of questions. So some important bits to remember about sine cosine tangent graphs are that uh, sine and cosine graphs are just shifted, so you just need to remember the shape, uh, the general shape, and their starting point, and you can work out it all from there. And that saves, mm, I guess, one third of the workload, kind of. Um, then, it's a good idea to remember those special points like the peak and the zero numbers, and also where the number doesn't meet for tangent graphs. So that is useful. Then, finally, draw the graphs a lot. Practice how to draw those graphs. I know it's tedious, I hate drawing graphs myself, but it helps. As long as it works, doesn't matter if it's accurate or not. I just need a general shape, and if that shape is true, then whatever you do, the methods that you want to check to verify which um, answer has how many answers uh, or solutions, then you can do that right from the diagram and just draw a horizontal line through then you can find the two corresponding answers or the one or the three whatever and so draw them and if there are questions on it draw that particular graph on the side even if you don't use it looking at it makes it a bit easier so there aren't really constructive questions that I can give for you to practice. All I can give you is a graph to draw the sine cosine tangent. And yeah, that is it for this video. And I really hope that you've learned something. I've helped you with uh, those questions. And hope you get a good um, question and just try to see what kind of number what numbers of answer you will get from the question and that would help so yeah that's it
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did learn something, leave me a like and tell me about it. And I will see you next time.